No Fun, the Jen Kirkman podcast, episode nine, nine, episode nine, season 11. Don't you start thinking, I've only done nine episodes of this podcast. Oh, no. There's been whatever 11 times 50 is, over 500, well over 500 episodes. Anyway, I am your host, Jen Kirkman. Thank you for being here. You are listening to the free version of the podcast, which is a shorter version. If you would like this entire episode, which is anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes long, please join the Patreon. The link is right there in the show notes, and it's the only and best way to support this show financially. We've got a great group of people over there leaving comments that nobody else can see. It's not like on your Facebook and your aunt and uncle can see everything you're writing. Nobody can see except other patrons. And we've got a lot of fun discussions going on there. So please join. It would mean the world to me. And if you subscribe for a year, you get 10% off. So there you go. I know the Patreons that are listening to this right now are thinking, I already know this and I want to have to sit through it. So let's just get on. Okay, I am so upset that I'm not the one that found the alligator in Prospect Park in Brooklyn, okay? I love alligators. I have said this many times. Most people don't believe me. They say, Jen, but what if you saw an alligator and it started chasing you? And I say, yes, that is fun to me. To picture myself trying to outrun an alligator is more interesting than anything that ever happens to me. But Jen, it could kill you. I know. I know it could. I don't want it to. But let's just say that there is some overlord. I guess you could say God. That's the most common thing people think of. God, master of the universe, divine plan. Fate. And on that day, whatever day I'm talking about, blank, blank of blank year, that's the day I'm to leave the earth. So nothing could have prevented me from leaving the earth that day. Whatever I was going to do that day was going to be how I leave the earth. So, yes, I would like it to be by an alligator chasing me in Brooklyn. First of all, the press would be wild on that. And I don't even care if people are talking about me once I'm eaten by the alligator. I fully think I wouldn't know. But it gives the people mourning me some kind of comic relief. They'd say, this is so unfair. But they'd also say, what a way to go. This is crazy. So again, no, I don't want to be torn limb from limb by an alligator. But the thought that it could happen does not stop me from fantasizing that if there's going to be an alligator that's found in Prospect Park, Brooklyn, which did happen last week, it doesn't stop me from fantasizing that I wish it had been me, risk and all. I'm a fan of reptiles. Am I one of those weirdos that has a gross tank in their home and I have an iguana and a chameleon? No. I want reptiles to be where they're supposed to be and I like to go visit. I've said this before. I love a swamp tour. You want to take me on an Everglades airboat ride? I'm there. And I hope something that happens with global warming, climate change, is that the giant lake in Prospect Park, Brooklyn, which I live very close to, I hope it turns into a swamp. Everybody will be so upset about climate change and how it's wreaking havoc on everything from your property to your health. And I will be doing the same. But as long as Prospect Park turns into a swamp, I'll be happy. I will start an airboat tour. You know those boats, fan boats, airboats, what are they called? But they glide a little bit over the water. And you get to see crocodiles, alligators. Man, it's something I love. But anyway, the alligator that was found in Prospect Park, Brooklyn, was not 
natural, if that makes sense. He or she or they did not end up in Prospect Park because of some global warming climate change situation. No, no, no. The alligator did not naturally migrate here. It seems as though some fool had this alligator as a pet. Now, again, please get this straight. I don't want a pet alligator. I just want to visit them on their terms. So some idiot must have had a pet alligator because this alligator was found with a four-inch wide bathtub stopper in his stomach. So that leads me to believe that this alligator was being kept alive in somebody's bathtub at the appropriate water temperature, which has to be a certain warm temperature. And you all know when you run a bath, first it's too hot and you stick your foot in and you burn the skin off of your toe. And then you think, I'll just come back in a minute. It will be cooler. And then if you're anything like me, you forget that you drew a bath in the first place. This is for my ADHD people. And an hour later, you remember, oh my God, I had a bath waiting for me. And now it's freezing. And now you let a little bit of the water out and then you add a little more hot water in it and it never gets warm enough. But you think, I'm going to waste water if I don't at least get in the bathtub. So then you get in the bathtub in this sort of not even warm, almost warm, so close to warm temperature. And you sit in it and you're miserable. And you sit there as though you're being watched by some kind of environmental committee that's going to make sure you didn't totally waste this water. And you sit there for about 10 torturous minutes waiting for the time to be up when you can get out of the bathtub without feeling guilty about how much water you just wasted for this 10-minute bath. Anyway, so I don't understand how you keep an alligator healthy and alive in a bathtub because the water has to be a certain temperature. And you would have to spend all day constantly adding warm water to it. I don't understand how the alligator stayed in the bathtub. I mean, was it one of those showers with the glass doors? It would have to be. Or is there some kind of bathtub you can buy and have in your home for alligators? I just don't understand who has that kind of money to and room in their Brooklyn apartment to buy an alligator bathtub and I don't know why I'm assuming that it's someone who's more on the broke side of life that would have an alligator. I understand that rich people have ridiculous things that they don't need and that rich people often are just taking animals from their natural habitat because they think it's fun. A lot of millionaires in Texas have tigers in their yards. This is a thing. I heard about it. I've never seen it, but I've heard about it. Right? Rich people have a private jet. They go hunting for elephants. They're a menace to society. But I just have this, it's just a feeling that the rich people in Brooklyn are not the pet alligator types. It seems more like a stoner guy who like sort of works. Maybe he delivers food for one of the food app delivery services and he's the guy that brings his own Tupperware and takes some of your food out and puts it in his Tupperware before he delivers it to you and scams off the system that way and spends all of his money on weed and then alligator things. That's just the vibe I'm getting. But I don't know. It seems as though, if I'm going to be a detective, that this alligator was in a bathtub. Wow, Jen, how did you figure that out? The alligator, had, who is not a natural native to Brooklyn, had a bathtub stopper in his digestive system. And you think, wait, you're telling me, Jen, that you think he may have been in a bathtub? Wow. This is why I listen to this podcast, Jen. I listen to this podcast because you think so outside of and yet still inside of the box. You are brilliant. You're 
Brilliant. I know. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know anyone else who could have figured this out. I may offer my assistance to the authorities that are looking into it. Maybe he, maybe he escaped a zoo. I mean, that didn't even dawn on me. He could have escaped the Bronx Zoo because those are the people that are now looking after him. But they didn't say, oh, this was one of ours. This was, um, this was Steve, the alligator. I can't believe he got, we've been looking for him. He's always, he's always been a wanderer, that Steve. So anyway, here's what happened. The alligator was in Prospect Park. Now it's this beautiful lake. There's ducks. There's ice skating in the winter. It's ginormous. And Prospect Park, I think, might be bigger than Central Park, but it is a huge park in Brooklyn's Park Slope area. I don't live close to this part. I used to live a little closer to this part, but again, maybe a mile and a half away. So I haven't been to the park in a while. Sometimes I will take walks in there. And every weekend, even when it's cold, I think I should just walk to the park. And then I don't. I think I'll do it in the spring. This is what I get. This is what I get for not being as active as I want to be. I miss out on finding an alligator. I really wish it had been me. And the other thing, all the people that say, oh, Jen, that you would have been hurt by the alligator. It was way underweight. It was exhausted. It couldn't hunt for its own food. It was not going to start running after me. That's why I wouldn't have been scared. This would have been a slow-moving, delirious, confused alligator who needed my help. I wouldn't have gone up to it and taken a selfie like when white people do things like that. that I, I wouldn't have done that. I just would have seen it, called the appropriate people, and I would have stayed around the whole time watching them save this alligator. But no, I wouldn't have been one of those idiots that, that gets real close, takes a selfie, and then, you know, puts it on Instagram. Anyway, so even if I did take a selfie, I don't think I'd ever tell anybody. I'd save it for a few close friends, and I'd say, I know this is stupid. I know this is bad. I had already called the authorities. I was just waiting for them, and I felt it was safe, and I took a selfie. But I would never post it on social media because I don't want people making fun of me and saying, oh, my God, what's wrong with white people? Why do they always have to do dangerous things? So anyway, a sick four foot long alligator that was caught on last Sunday in Brooklyn was found to have ingested a four inch wide bathtub stopper. A member of the Prospect Park maintenance staff spotted the gator near Duck Island in Prospect Park Lake. The rescue wasn't too difficult given the condition of the alligator and its proximity to the banks of the lake. New York City's Parks Department officials said he was lethargic, extremely emaciated, and suffering from exposure to cold temperatures. He's currently undergoing evaluation at the zoo by veterinarians and animal care staff. The zoo said, oh, as a female alligator, was slowly warmed to an appropriate ambient temperature and is receiving supportive care. She's being tube fed to provide her with nutrients and fluids because the alligator is currently too weak and unresponsive to eat on her own. Yet she weighed only 15 pounds. The alligator, her size, should weigh between 30 and 35. She's about five to six years old. Oh, I don't know how long they live. That could be old. Um, yes, so the zookeeper said the tragedy of the situation is a reminder that wild animals do not make good pets. <sighs> They're looking for the person who dumped the alligator. Releasing animals in New York City parks is illegal. Oh, I didn't even think of it as someone dumped the alligator. I don't know what I was thinking. I really did not think that somebody had dumped the alligator. I was thinking more that it, this is truly what I was thinking. And, you know, I don't think this is crazy. It's probably crazy. Um, but someone who lives on a first floor apartment had an alligator in their bathtub. I 
like I don't have the story of how it got there in the first place, but they have the alligator in their bathtub. The alligator is in the water. The water is getting cold. The alligator is thinking, fuck this. I'm going to die. I need to be in warmer water. It eats the bathtub stopper in order to drain the tub. For some reason in this fantasy, it's easier for the alligator to get out of the tub when it's not wet. The alligator eats the stopper. The tub is drained. The alligator puts one little reptile leg over the edge of the tub, then the other. It kind of slides onto the bathroom floor and she starts walking out of the bathroom, down the hall. And this person that has an alligator, I wouldn't put it past them to forget to shut their front door when they leave for the day. So the front door is wide open and the alligator just walks outside and is outside on the concrete thinking, shit, there is no warm water anywhere oh my God, why aren't I in my natural habitat? (sighs) But my owner, the person that stole me and put me in a bathtub is so stupid, I don't think I can rely on them to keep me alive. So I may as well forge on on my own and see if I can find water. And maybe there is some kind of instinct that the alligator has where it can sense that there is water a couple of miles away in the Prospect Park Lake. And so she just keeps walking exhausted until she finds the lake and goes in. That's truly in a vague way, I think, what I thought in the back of my head. Now, I don't know how she gets from the apartment to the lake without anyone seeing her, but maybe people did see her and they are much like the people that chastise me for wanting to find an alligator. They are too afraid to go near it and they don't know who to call. Because honestly, when I read this article, it didn't even dawn on me to call a zoo or a park expert. I would have called 911. And, you know, you wait on hold a long time. And I think, you know, I would have waited on hold as long as I could have. And then the 911 operator would have said, 911, what's your emergency? And I would have said, there's an alligator walking down Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn, headed towards Flatbush. I think they're looking for... a they're looking for the lake and 911 would have said oh that's not us you have to call blah blah animal rescue and I'd say oh can you connect me and they'd say sorry ma'am we don't do that and I think I just spent the half hour I had free where I'm supposed to be walking to work calling 911 I don't have any more time I can't call animal control and wait here like maybe that happened over and over and over and the alligator just made it to the park or maybe it, it left it at night and it just didn't happen to pass by anyone that was up late or maybe a few people did see it and they thought they were just tripping they're like dude these mushrooms are strong I think I saw an alligator or people are thinking wow rats are really getting bigger and they ran I don't know but that's how I pictured this alligator getting to the lake but now I'm realizing okay if you had a pet alligator and you didn't want it anymore How do you get it to the lake? I don't even understand that part. Oh, guys, we can't have all this alligator dumping, say the zookeepers. But how? How is anyone doing that? First of all, nobody has a car. Barely anybody has a car in New York. So do you call an Uber? You call one of the the SUV Ubers? And they help you with the alligator? You Would you put it in a big dry cleaning bag? I mean, I don't understand. Okay, maybe you had a, a car and you drive it. I still don't understand. I really don't. A wheelbarrow? What? How do you get this alligator to the lake without anyone seeing? It must have been a, a middle of the night thing. But I think we just start putting... Um, I don't know, like a lifeguard at the lake or security cameras or something 24-7 because I think there's going to be more of this. I think more and more people will be dumping their exotic pets in a lake. I don't think we can stop people from having their stupid exotic pets. But we should be ready to receive said pets at the lake. So anyway, I am just... I'm sad. I felt really sad reading this. And then I felt like a psychopath for feeling so sad because how many news stories do I read about 
an abandoned baby or a kid that got hit by a car or something, some tragedy that happens every day to people. And I just react with, oh, that's too bad. Oh, God. But as I was reading about this alligator and how it was underweight and and they 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 couldn't even do surgery to get the bathtub stopper out because the alligator wasn't in healthy enough condition to survive an operation, I felt sadness. I don't know if that's a bridge too far in being an alligator fan. It just really hit me. It just really hit me. Whoever wrote this abc7newyork.com article, you really wrote it with some kind of love. That really hit me in my soul. So anyway, or maybe, you know, this person had an alligator and it ate the bathtub stopper and started to show signs of being sick. And the person thought, okay, I didn't think this through. I don't know who to call with this sick alligator because if I call them, I'm going to get arrested for having an alligator. So maybe I'll just drop it at the lake and then like hopefully someone will figure it out. Or the alligator will just throw up the bathtub stopper and I'll come back and get the alligator after it's done that. But I don't know. I really hope they get to the bottom of this mystery. I know there's lots of mysteries to solve in the big city. But I'm here to say if anyone out there is investigating this and needs help from a podcaster who just happens to be a swamp tour enthusiast, just ask. Just ask. I don't have time to do this, but I will make time. Anyway, so I all, I miss the good stuff. And I also, it snowed in Los Angeles this week. And I moved from there to New York for many reasons. But one of the benefits to me was it's so apocalyptically hot in LA all of the time now. I miss snow. I can't wait to get back to New York. And it didn't snow once this year, but it snowed in fucking Los Angeles. Anyway, I'll talk about that for a minute and I'll be talking about so many other things on the Patreon version of the podcast. I'll be talking about many things that the Patreon subscribers asked me to expand on from last week's show when I talked about Winona Ryder dating dating Dave Grohl. I'll be talking about, I had a kerfuffle with the uh, front desk of a hotel last week and parents with kids who are now, as their kids are teenagers, are just starting to get into self-care and reading self-help books. And that if you don't have kids, you can never escape people with kids telling you what to do. For me, it used to be 20 years ago, you got to have kids. And now that that dream is over for them, never was my dream. But now that that's not happening officially and physically, now I'm getting from parents with kids, oh, you have to read this book and you have to learn to start taking care of yourself. A thing I've been doing the whole time. But how you realize, oh, it's just a type of person. There will always be someone assuming you don't know what you're doing and they need to tell you about how to live life. Meanwhile, they haven't been living life correctly the whole time. I will also be talking about people who are taping their mouth shut at night so their breath is good in the morning. I honestly am almost too exhausted to think about how stupid that is. And so much more as we continue the ad-free long version of this podcast, which you can only get on Patreon. And if you don't join up today, until next week, have fun.